Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about cubing and a new direction that I hope the cubing hobby goes in. All right, so let's define our terms today. So I'm talking about 3x3 three three cubing. All right, so in 1980, uh, Rubik's Cube, uh, the gentleman by the last name Rubik, uh, invented the Rubik's Cube, with Rubik's Cube, which is very famous. It's, it's actually considered the most uh, mass-produced toy ever, ever to exist. Uh, and it is considered a toy. It's also really a puzzle. Um, but it is the 3x3 three three cube. It has 43 quintillion combinations. It's an incredible device. Uh, and I'm now a ranked speed cuber. Uh, and I, it's a new hobby I have. I really, really like it a lot. I share it with my daughters. It's super fun. I love it. It's really super fun. And I've really been getting into it lately. And I really, really enjoy it. And um, But there's... There's some things that the cubing community could do that it's currently not doing. And uh, there's a new direction that I would like the cu cubing community to go in, and I'm gonna share that with you today. All right, so let's talk about what the cubing community currently does. All right, so the cubing cu community, the three by three cubing community, that's what I'm talking about today. I'm not, ta there are other three by, th there are other 3D puzzles. I'm only talking about the three by three cubing community, okay? Right now, uh, they are really hyper-focused on speed cubing. Speed cubing is very, very popular. Um, it has a huge uh, base. It's highly successful. It's highly organized. It's, it's got a fantastic community, and, and I'm very thankful for that. I really like that. But I also think that um, cubing is a hobby that is... Uh, actually, I think it could be a lot more than a hobby. Uh, I really think cubing and the cube... The 3x3 three three cube is really un, really untapped. It has a huge amount of untapped potential. So let's talk about what the cubing community does right now and what it can do. So what it does right now is speed cubing. Uh, you, saw, you scramble the cube, you solve the cube, and you, you work on solving the cube faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, okay? There's a lot of benefit to that. It's a lot of fun, it's great, but it's just one thing. And there's a lot of focus on it, and I think it's reached. I, I think it's kind of reached its limits. Uh, its limits, as far as um, it's reached some of its limits, and, and I think there's a huge opportunity. So, what is the new opportunity? Okay, let's talk about that. Well, I think the new opportunity is slow cubing. What is slow cubing? Well, there are three things that I think could be done with slow cubing. So one, uh, speed cubing is you scramble the cube, you solve the cube, and you try to do you try to do that solve faster and faster. Slow cubing is three other things you can do with a cube that are not focused on speed and that are specifically using the cube to do things other than just put it back into a solve state. Okay? So let's talk them through. The first is communication. I think there's a huge opportunity to communicate with the cube to communicate with the cube so communication is a it's a really deep topic language is an incredibly deep topic okay um and language is really it's one of my favorite subjects i absolutely love language i'm fascinated by language now one of the things that's really fascinating is i'm an evangelical christian so i actually see language as a curse uh you know um <laughs> language came about from the tower of babel and uh, basically it made it so that we, we couldn't communicate together uh, and we all had to speak different languages. And, it, and it, Now, since then, language has become a, an expression of heritage, which I, I understand that. It, it's kind of interesting. But the reality is um, language is, is sometimes a serious problem. And when we communicate, there are things that, are in, that we take for granted in communication that I think the cube could really, really, really help with. So what are some of the problems in current human communication? Well, one of the problems in current human communication is, inf uh, is inflection and nuance and, um, and all the things we project with our body, all the things we project with uh, our tone and our cadence, right? But if we were to be, if we developed a system that would allow us to communicate with cubes, and there'd be more than enough um, possibilities to communicate with patterns with cubes. You could cut it. You could get a very, very fast 
clear language, a cube language. And I'm really fascinated by this because like when I listen to people, like double meanings and uh, saying things that you don't mean um, and just really using language to do things that are really not helpful, I think having one language that could really strip away a lot of the problems of human speech and uh, the problems of oral language is fascinating. And the Cuban community, because cubes are so widespread and because, because cubing devices are so cheap and so readily available and so fun and so portable, they really serve as an incredible way to communicate. Where if if uh, slow cubing catches on, we could really develop a very unique and special language that people could use to communicate without nuance and with that with less nuance and actually you know what not with less with more clarity with maybe with more succinctness and maybe actually with more sincerity. I, I think that's really really an interesting subject, right? And the other thing is uh, the the uh, um, the Israel uh, the Israelite community has a has a saying. They say, "Do and you will understand." Not only do I think that the that a cubing language would have a really cool aspect to it, but I actually think the ideas that I just had might be just scratching the surface. The idea, the cubing community, the the idea of a cubing language could be so incredibly awesome and really, really such a huge opportunity. It might, it might unfold things about language that we really never under understood or really even had the possibility to do before. And I think that the I, you know, what could be done with a cubing language is, is it's just a blossoming flower. You could do a lot with it. All right, let's move on to the to the next thing you could do under slow cubing. Okay. So we, we talked about language, and, and that is one specific thing that you could do with cubes. You could, you could express language. That, that is a very distinct uh, you know, probability that you can do. Um, another one, so language is one. And then the second one is gaming. You can play games with cubes. Uh, there are lots. Uh, dice are a thing. We use those in lots of different games, but uh, a three by three cube it has a lot of variability and a lot of randomness, and it doesn't have the jangliness of dice, which I think it could be a real uh, usefulness. The other thing is when you get multiple cubes together, the facing and how they connect, and how colors interconnect, and how alignment would work. All of those things could be massively used within a game to produce randomness, you could create board tiles with cubes, um, you can create randomness with cubes, you can create patterns with cubes, and all of these, and these are all super, super specific aspects that you can use within a game, within a game setting. All kind of different kinds of setting. Board games, tabletop role-playing games, um, and, and many other, you know, it, it could even be combined with tile or card games, all those things could would be, in my opinion, really, really interesting to do with a cube, right? So, so you have these specific uh, aspects that you could do with a cube. Um, so slow cubing, I think, is a really, really fascinating topic. I think it is, uh, it is a very um, important thing that should be explored by the cubing community overall, um, and I, I really, you know, I just really think these these cubes are are incredibly important uh, devices, and they're only forty years old. Uh, so Rubik brought these out in nineteen eighty, and they're now here. And I think you can really go, you know, you can really do a lot more with them than we are currently doing with the three by three cubes, um, and so. Uh, there was one more that I had on my mind that I'm just, it's slipping my mind right now. Uh, so you have language, you have gaming. There was one more that I'm, that I'm just, I had it earlier on and I'm just not thinking of it now, but I very much appreciate you letting me share that, share these two ideas with you. 
I think there are other uh, ideas that you could do with slow cubing. Um, but I really think I, I'm very excited about, about cubes overall. And I think language and gaming are two great ways to think about cubing and to begin to explore new and different ways to use cubes. All that's my opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion on the topic. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.